summer in the kitchen. This is the perfect place to be because we're learning how to prepare dishes that are easy, delicious, and healthy. Join me. I'm in the process of doing a little planning and I thought, what better way to do that than with you? So we're going to take a look and uh, put together a vegan Zupa Toscana, mm, can't even say it, a vegan Zupa Toscano. And you know what? It is so delicious. It's so creamy and uh, has lots of goodness. It's hearty and I think everyone would like it. But in addition to that, I want a little cornbread on the side. So we're going to have to put that together as well. Now, uh, I think I may also this week prepare a, what I call a cold slaw on the go. Now, what that means is, is that we're going to prepare the coleslaw in such a way that we can take it to a picnic, church, friend's house, wherever it may be. And it's going to be safe. That's what we want. But in addition to being safe, we want it to be delicious. So we're going to do that also. I'm in the process of doing a little planning. And I thought, what better way to do that than with you? So we're going to take a look and uh, put together a vegan Zupa Toscana, mm, can't even say it. You better get comfortable and you better get a front row seat because it's going to be fun. Now today's cornbread is not gluten free. And the only reason for that is because of the fact that I could not find uh, gluten free cornmeal. So I'm gonna be adding in, and this is actually a cornmeal mix. So I'm gonna put in about two cups of my cornmeal mix. Now today's cornbread is not gluten free. And the only reason for that is because, and it's Hudson Valley, I'll, they have a delicious mix. Oops, and I will uh, link that down in the description box. But let me tell you, this recipe is very forgiving. So two cups. All right, got our two cups in. We're also gonna put in about a third cup of sugar. And that's because I like mine a little sweet. Now, if you don't like your sweet, you can leave the sugar out. Okay. All right, that's how I learned to eat cornbread was to have it sweet. So that's the reason why I'm adding the sugar. Now, we also need some eggs. So I have some eggs here. I'm gonna take a couple out. I'm gonna get a bowl, we're gonna beat them, and uh, we're gonna add them to the milk mixture. I need one cup of milk. I may need just a tad bit more, but for now, we're gonna start with one cup. And the reason I say we may need more is because we have to look at the texture of our mixture. All right, one egg. Two eggs. All right, let me get a fork and we'll get this beat up. All right, I got my egg and my milk. And we're gonna beat this really good so that it's all together. Now, you know, cornbread is so much fun. It's light. You can cook enough so that you can have it for more than one night. And that's what we're doing. We're gonna fix enough that I can have some tonight. And I'm gonna have some another night this week. And you notice I used almond milk, which is gonna change the taste just a little bit. Most of the time I use buttermilk, but I haven't been buying buttermilk since I've tried to stay on my plant-based uh, journey, so I'm not using the buttermilk, and I know I'm using these two eggs, but, you know, I didn't have an egg substitute, so there it is. We're doing the best we can with what we have. All right, so I'm going to put this in. And let's get it mixed. And it's going to be a little thick. And that's okay. If it's too thick, then we'll know we need to add just a little bit more uh, of the almond milk. I think that's a pretty good texture from what I can see. I may add just a drop or two. Now I'm going to take mine, like I said, I'm going to add a drop. Just a little bit, just to loosen it up a little bit. Of course, you don't want it runny. But I'm going to cook mine like they're muffins. 
So I'm going to pull out the muffin tins. And, uh, you know, the nice thing about muffin tins, too, is the fact that they cook a lot faster rather than putting them into a regular pan. Okay, that's perfect. All right, I got my egg and my milk. And we're going to beat this really good so that it's all together. Now, you know, cornbread is so much fun. It's light. You can cook enough so that you can have it for more than one night. And that's what we're doing. We're going to fix enough that I can have some tonight. And I'm going to have some another night this week. And you notice I used almond milk, which is going to change the taste just a little bit. Most of the time, I get these are larger muffin tins. So I've got my scoop to try to keep everything even. And I'm going to place my batter into each one. So we'll see how we do. Try to keep everything even. I think we just might make it. You know, we do not want to waste anything. So I'm going to clean this out and get all of this into this little cupcake. These are my little silicone muffin containers, my muffin cups. They bake so nicely. Okay. All gone, ready for the oven. Now that made seven. So I'm gonna scoop these just a little bit so we can get number seven in. I'm gonna put it right here in the middle, spread them out. And I'm gonna put them on a 350 uh, degrees Fahrenheit oven on convect bake. I'm gonna put them on a 350. How many of you store your large baking pans in your oven. I do. Now, you know we're preparing a vegan Zuppa Toscano. Now, so because of that, I had to come up with some real special items in order to get this together. So this is where we're starting. In my snapware, I have chopped up some plant-based bacon and Italian sausage. And is it the Italian sausage that we're all used to just picking up at the grocery? No. These are plant-based options. So I'm starting with this. I'm putting this into the bowl so that they're all in there. And uh, I'm using two of the sausages that I've chopped up. And I used about four to five slices of plant-based bacon. And the reason for that is because plant-based bacon is not as long as your regular bacon. So remember, we're substituting. So we're going to, uh, I've got that in our cooker here. Now, in addition to that, I need to add at least two heaping teaspoons of garlic. That's one, and that's two, because garlic is an important substance. All right, got that taken care of. All right, I'm also going to put in, this is about four cups of sliced now what I did, I thinly sliced the russet potatoes. I used about five russet potatoes and I sliced them and they actually came out to look a little bit like matchsticks. And I'm okay with that because as they cook, they'll cook quickly, but I want them to cook finely so that I can uh, add a little thickness to it. So we're gonna add the four cups and I had covered these in water. So we're also adding in water as we pour those in. Okay, so we've got our potatoes in. All right, our four cups of potatoes, as well as our, a bit of water. Now, all the rest of the liquids that we'll use today will be the vegetable broth. Now, I have a box of, I don't know which one, I have to kind of play with these two because they both have broth in them. 
I'm going to start out with at least two cups. I want this covered. This is actually vegetable stock. And let's see if I can get two cups. Oh, that's almost two cups to, on the nose in this box. Now, I already know I'm going to need a little extra. I can just look at it and know. I'm going to need some more. So I'm going to add in at least a third cup. Maybe I may do four cups of the stock. Just remember, this is a soup, not a stew. So I finished off both of those boxes. That worked out perfectly. Okay, so let's pour that in. Now, we want this soup to be nice and creamy. So I'm making sure I have everything out of our container where the potatoes were. And uh, now it's time to do a little bit of seasoning up. So I'm gonna bring you in a little closer so you can see what I'm gonna put in here. So because of that, I had to come up with some real special items in order to get this together. So this is where we're starting. In my snapware, I have chopped up some plant-based bacon and Italian sausage. And is it the Italian sausage that we're all used to just picking up at the grocery? No. These are plant-based options. So I'm starting with this. I'm putting this into the bowl so that they're all in there. And uh, I'm using two of the sausages that I've chopped up. And I used about four to five slices of plant-based bacon. And the reason for that is because plant-based bacon is not as long as your regular bacon. So remember, we're substituting. So we're going, now before we get started, I want to show you the boxes. This is the plant-based box for the sausage links that we're using in here, and I used two. You could use more if you wanted to, but I chose two because I thought that was gonna be substantial for the size uh, pot that I'm using. I also used Morning Star um, bacon, and uh, of course, they call it uh, veggie bacon strips, and so we're gonna be, we had put those in as well. But I wanted you to see the box so you would know what to look for when you go to the store. Now. I also have a can of white beans. And what I'm going to do with this can of white beans is I'm going to blend it so that it's going to add a little thickening for our uh, switch. All right, so we've got our container here. I'm going to put the beans in. One whole can. and I drained them and rinsed them off a little bit. Okay, got those in. And I'm gonna blend these until it's smooth. Now I think what I'll actually do before I do that, I think this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and add the seasonings in here so they will blend with the goodness of the soup because this thickener is going to get everywhere. So let's do that. We've got a measuring spoon and I'm going to start with at least a teaspoon of our house seasoning, which you know that has onion powder, garlic powder, and pepper. One teaspoon. If you decide that you want to add an additional one, you can. I'm also going to add in a teaspoon of no salt seasoning. as well as I have a little dried vegetable powder that I'm going to add. And I'm gonna put about one and a half, well, let's say two teaspoons of that dried vegetable powder in. It's gonna give it good background. I'm also gonna add a pinch. You know, I have to have a little pepperoncino in there. So I'm just gonna add, you can see a little pinch of pepperoncino to it. Now, that's optional. That's Leona's way, not yours. May not be yours, but we are going to need some smoked paprika. I'm going to sprinkle about a teaspoon in. Give all of this a mix so it sticks to those beans. And as they blend, I'm going to put just a dab of water in. Just adapt so it will blend easily. Okay. Now, if we have to add a little more water, we will, but I don't think so. 
All right, so here's my magic bullet. Oh my goodness, I have had this magic bullet for quite a while. And let me tell you, it is one of my most used blenders, most used. All right, so we're gonna get this blended. And once these beans are blended, we'll be ready to add it to the soup. Now, I have my beans nice and blended and we're gonna add, and they're pretty thick, so I'm gonna add it. I did have to add just a tad bit of water, more liquid to it, and what I did was to actually take some of the vegetable stock that was already in our soup and uh, added it to the mixture. So I'm gonna put all of that in, making sure to get all of the seasoning out. You don't wanna leave any of that goodness sitting in your container. So that's done. Now the one thing that I didn't put in and I know you all are going, oh, she forgot. Yes, I did. I forgot to add our onions. So I have one chopped onion. This soup is very forgiving. So thank goodness I didn't have to add it at a certain time. So our onions are in, our bullet is in, I mean our uh, meat's in, our plant-based meat anyway. All of that's into our mixture. Now, once this is cooked a while, then you may opt to uh, go back and to uh, add a little bit of salt. You could certainly do that. But this is that those blended beans just totally change the texture. Now, you know, kale is going to go into this. And I'm looking at this thinking, we may have just a little bit too much liquid for it to start out. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the liquid off. That's about a cup. And later, I'll go back and put that in. So I'm gonna save that. So I'm just gonna take this, let everything cook, and add liquid when needed. You might find the occasional bean, which I see one that's there, but I'm gonna leave them in there. Okay. Let's give it a taste and then we'll know ready, whether or not it's ready to start. Oh, that's good. Okay, so we're gonna get this into the cooker and we're gonna be set for dinner. I'm gonna take a look at those muffins and see how they're doing. They should be just about ready to come out. All right. Cooker's on, I'm gonna sit it right here, put the top on it, and it's good to go. Our muffins look so nicely. I'm gonna to have to check them to see if they're ready. I can either use... It's been about 15 minutes. Oh yeah, they're perfect, just perfect. I went ahead and put a hole in each one. It's been about 15 minutes. Oh yeah, because I'm gonna place, I'm gonna rub them with just a little bit of plant-based butter. Because I'm gonna place, I'm gonna. Now just think, we are slathering on the plant butter. And of course, if someone wants to add a little extra butter once they actually open up the muffin, they can certainly do that. But we've got our muffins ready and our Zuppa Toscano is cooking. Now, and that's gonna take just about oh, 30 to 40 minutes for it to come together. Now, of course, we could throw it into the refrigerator and let it sit for overnight where those flavors really have a chance to go through it, but we're not gonna do this because we like those easy, quick dishes. Now, also keep in mind that uh, sometimes when we have a recipe, and I actually got this recipe from my friend Denise Jordan over at Homemaking with Purpose, and she's my sister by another mister. And so she was trying to, or she is trying to work in a more vegetarian, vegan lifestyle as well. And so with that, she's trying to convert dishes from the traditional over to a more vegan style. So I get to be, I get to test them out 
and then I get to share them with not only her, but you as well. So that's what we're doing today. She called and said, hey, do you have a recipe for this? And I thought, you know, no, I don't. But let me work on that. So here we are, ready to go. Plus, they come out so pretty. Hmm. Now I could have let I could have waited, but I wanted you to see how easy it is to take them out. Let's give this baby a taste. I'm gonna take a little wedge out and you'll see that it is nice and hot. Look at the crumb. It is absolutely perfect. And it's gonna go so well with our Zupa Toscano. Now, I'm also gonna give it a taste and that's gonna be even better. And I'm, going, and I'm not gonna cheat, I'm not gonna put any more butter on it. I'm just gonna let the butter that we put on it initially be enough. But you know, I'm tasting it and I'm thinking, hmm. Now for me, normally, I would say I'd want just a little more sugar. But for those of you who really aren't that into putting sugar in your cornbread, then this is gonna be just right because it's just a hint of sugar and uh, just enough to take away any slight bitterness that might come from the cornmeal. Now, so we're ready to go. And in about 30 minutes, our, and we're talking 30 minutes hands off, our Zupa Tucano is gonna be ready and dinner is gonna be served. You are always welcome into the kitchen of Ebony, Ivy, and Time. I invite you to subscribe, and to hit that like button before you leave because of the fact that this is where we are inspiring home cooks to cook daily, to decorate their kitchen, and to love on their family. So I hope that you'll take a moment and uh, certainly join our family and don't forget, hit that like button. So. Let's get to the rest of our video. you will want to take out your frozen kale because at this point, we're going to add that frozen kale. It's already chopped, which is so convenient. And I'm gonna take, this is a 10 ounce bag, and I'm gonna take about half of it. And that's what I'm gonna put into the soup. 
Now, if you want more kale, you can certainly add the entire bag, but the big guy likes kale, but not quite that much. So we're just gonna add half of the bag to this container of soup. It's nice and bubbly, it's ready to go. And before we leave today, I'm gonna give you my critique on our plant-based items that we used in this soup. Now it's time to add the piece de resistance. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna add some cream and not regular cream. We're adding our plant-based cream to the soup to give it that richness and the texture that we love in Super Sacano. Now, I'm bringing you in and giving you a close-up of the soup. As you can see, there are little strips of bacon that are very visible in this soup. And I'm gonna have to taste it, taste the bacon and see if it's worth putting into the soup. So I did. And you know, the thing of it is, is that I have to be honest where honesty is necessary. The soup tastes amazing. But the bacon portion of it, that our tofu bacon, our plant-based bacon, the next time I make it, I will leave it out because I don't think it really added enough oomph to the soup to make it necessary. And you know, if you're gonna make it just a regular traditional way, then certainly bring in the bacon, but not this way. Now the sausage worked out just perfect. It gives your mouth the texture of the regular Italian sausage that you would be using in a more traditional recipe, but the bacon didn't do that. So next time, guys, we're going to leave the bacon out. And when I put the recipe down below, the, the plant-based bacon won't be in there. I hope you enjoyed these recipes as much as I did. And I hope you enjoyed spending the time in the kitchen because it's always a lot of fun. Now, these recipes are healthy, delicious, easy to make, and you know what? So good for your family. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to click that subscribe button if you are not a member of the family. And if you want more healthy and delicious recipes, come back Be right here to Ebony, Ivy, and Time. Thanks for watching and happy cooking.